Turns out all those rumors were true. This is the new Panasonic Lumix GH5S. So the GH5S is real and it's just arrived on my desk. Now we're gonna be starting our review shortly, but in the meantime, here's a first look at the new camera and some of my thoughts. So what exactly is the difference between the GH5 and the GH5S? Now to start, the biggest change is in that four third sensor. Gone is the 20 million pixel sensor of the GH5 and it's been replaced with a 10 million pixel four third sensor. Why the lower pixel count? Well, to start, the GH5S has 50% fewer pixels. Now, that means that the photo sites are 1.96 times larger than on the GH5. That's going to lead to improved dynamic range and ISO sensitivity, lower noise, basically improved performance at those higher ISOs. But the sensor is more than just fewer pixels. It has dual native ISO. We've seen this before on the Panasonic EVA1. And this is where each photo site, rather than having just a single analog to digital converter, on the GH5S sensor, there are actually two AD converters with different gains, a low and a high. Now the camera will choose which of these converters to use to keep noise levels to a minimum. Now this in fact gives the camera two native ISO sensitivities and they are ISO 400 and ISO 2500. So what does this mean for video shooters? Well, the GH5S can shoot cinema 4K at a rate of up to 60 frames a second. Now, as a comparison, the GH5 could only shoot standard 4K at 60 frames per second. Remaining the same as the GH5 is the 422 10-bit internal recording at an incredible 400 megabits per second data rate. Now, you can also send a signal out through HDMI so you can record to an external recorder such as an Atomos Shogun. The GH5S has two memory card sockets, both of which are UHS-2 V90 compatible. Now, to get the most out of the camera's internal recording capabilities, you will need to use one of those V90 cards. And rather conveniently, Panasonic has just released one and it claims to be the world's fastest SD card. And obviously this is a camera designed specifically for video. So there is none of that 29 minute, 29 second recording limit. You can press record on the camera and it won't stop until the memory card is full or the battery runs out. Amongst the other high end features for filmmakers is the ability to take a time code in or out of the GH5S. Now included with the camera is a special cable that inserts into the flash sync socket just here. And this allows the GH5S to generate a time code to allow other cameras to be synced with it or the other cameras can actually sync the GH5S. Now, audio has also seen a boost, as well as a microphone input. The GH5S can switch the microphone input to actually be line level input. So you can use external recorders and plug them directly into the GH5S for better quality. In terms of color, V-Log comes pre-installed. You won't need to buy it and add it on. And all of those color options from the GH5 are included, like the Rec 709 mode, all the vector scopes and waveforms, luminance level controls, everything from the GH5 is still in here. And body-wise, it's the same as the GH5. It's weather sealed, dust proof, freeze proof, and most importantly, the body is actually exactly the same size. So all of those accessories can be used. The cages, the batteries, the XLR adapter, everything is gonna work from the GH5 to the GH5S. There are a few style changes. Notably, the record button is bright red and labeled rec, rather than just being that simple red dot from the GH5. And then also there's this stylish little red ring around the, the shooting kind of modes there. Now, one of the most popular features of the GH5 is its ability to shoot anamorphic footage and then de-squeeze it actually in the camera. Now, the GH5S retains this ability to record for free footage and then de squeeze that into 17 by nine anamorphic. Now, if none of that 4K shooting takes you fancy, then don't worry. Of course, the GH5S can shoot full HD 1080p and it's available in frame rates of up to a really impressive 240 frames a second. Now, there are a few features from the GH5 that haven't been carried over to the GH5S. And one of these that will no doubt cause a lot of arguments and discussion online is the fact that the sensor-based stabilization has been removed. Now, I feel this is gonna put off a lot of users who really enjoyed that five-axis stabilization. 
but for more serious filmmakers, it shouldn't be as much of an issue as it's more likely you're gonna be using some additional form of stabilization. Now, the advantage is of not having that stabilized sensor, it means those kind of tiny little micro wobbles that you can get when you are mounting the GH5 on kind of moving vehicles, you shouldn't be getting those with the GH5S, so there is a benefit to it. Okay, so that's filmmakers, but what about photographers? Well, you haven't been left out. The GH5S should prove a really capable camera for shooting in low light, and we're gonna test it out hopefully against a Sony A7S Mark II and see just how good you can get images from the four-thirds sensor. So the sensor is also a multi-aspect ratio sensor. We've seen this before on other Panasonic cameras, and it allows you to change the aspect ratio crop in camera with a minimal loss of resolution. The camera can capture 14-bit raw images at 11 frames per second for 60 images when it's in single AFS mode or 7 frames per second when you're shooting in continuous mode. Now, if you want to knock the bit depth down to 12-bit, you can shoot up to 12 frames a second, which is really impressive. Now, focusing is taken care of thanks to Panasonic's depth from defocus, the DFD autofocus. So it should be like the focusing of the GH5, but with some of the refinements that have been found more recently in the G9. You want a GH5S? Well, you're not gonna to have to wait very long because in fact, it's gonna be available in a week's time. The 15th of January, 2018, it goes on sale. It's gonna cost 2,199 pounds and it's actually available body only. There won't be any lens kits available for the GH5S, although I anticipate that a few retailers may actually offer their own kind of kit bundles that they've bundled up themselves. Okay, so my first thoughts about the GH5S. You're lowering the resolution here, so you're not gonna capture quite as much detail of those still images, but what you're gonna get is even more dynamic range, hopefully. So it counters that dynamic range argument from the four third sensor. So let's look into that over the next few weeks, see how that works. From a video point of view, this promises to be absolutely amazing in terms of low light performance. We've seen some clips comparing it to some of its competitors. Now, they're obviously Panasonic clips. I wanna go out and shoot my own and see how it compares to some other cameras. But initially, my thoughts are it might hold its own up against the full frame sensor because the sensors, the full frame ones from sort of Sony are a couple of years old now. This is the very latest sensor technology. Let's just see how good it is and how well it holds up to those full frame sensors. The GH5 has been hugely popular for videographers, for filmmakers, and this promises to be another camera that I'm sure many people will be rushing out to buy. Now the five axis stabilization, it's a big thing maybe not having that, but you do obviously have optical stabilization if you're using Panasonic lenses. If you're going out and you're using vintage lenses or you're adapting lenses from other brands, then you've got a consideration to be made there because you're not gonna have the stabilization that you've been expecting and experiencing from your GH5 because obviously it's reliant on optical now. Again, if you're serious about your filmmaking, you're gonna have a three axis gimbal, a Ronin or a single handed one, tripods, monopods. So the stabilization thing is gonna be less of an issue. But if you're shooting handheld, run and gun, then that is something that you're gonna to need to seriously consider before you rush out and use and buy a GH5S. So they're just my initial thoughts. I'm gonna be going out and testing the camera some more over the next week or so. We've got some other guys on the team at PGN who are also gonna be doing some tests. We're gonna be looking at the image quality, both for still images and for video, and uploading those online. So if you don't wanna miss any of that content, make sure you hit the subscribe button just there. Then over here is another video that YouTube is suggesting you watch from our channel next. I will see you guys next time.